Let's get into this match preview then with Man United. We do go to Old Trafford on Sunday, a 4.30 kickoff against um, Man United. And it's not going to be an easy game. I think wherever kind of state Man United are in, we always seem to have a very tough ride there, don't we, Brian? It's, it's always seemed to be a game where we have some sort of mental block at Old Trafford, it seems. I know we have had a few decent results in recent times, not most notably a 6-1 uh, Old Trafford and, uh, and obviously Lucas Moura. Um, we're, uh, getting us a win there uh, with the brace and we won 3-0 we won but it seems to be a game that wherever, we, wherever form we're on and whatever form Man United are on um, we seem to really be struggling we still struggle up at Old Trafford and we always seem to have a bit of a mental block look at these are the last five games against Man United we'll bring that up you can see here uh, that 3-2 loss um, Old Trafford that was when Ronaldo scored a hat-trick uh, last season at Old Trafford we lost 2-0 uh, and that was a game we went into it in decent form and Man United was struggling and we still got uh, turned over. Um, so what is it about us and Man United? Do you reckon it's just a mental block against a team who we know is a big club and it's a big stadium? We just seem to always struggle when we go there or is it just a consequence of uh, the quality of teams going there sometimes? I, I, I actually think this has become a mentality or, or used to think that recently it's been a mentality thing. You go to Old Trafford a huge stage and with the huge illustrious history i think we've got in there and our head's not been in the right place we know the last couple of years the team haven't been right off the pitch as well as on the pitch whereas now they're just bursting with uh confidence bursting with pride bursting with enthusiasm they're, they're ready to fight uh and i think this year is different i really really do comfortably going to be different we'll get there when we do predictions but you do go to Old Trafford and it is a stadium steeped in history. It may be falling down and we all know what's going on with them and their owners. Um, I think it's a mentality thing. But I think uh, our mentality is probably as strong and together as it ever has been in recent history. Yeah, and I think there's definitely going to be a bit of a buzz for Tottenham, you know, with the new signings um, coming into the frame and maybe giving us some new energy. Because as Postacoglu said in recent in recent weeks, you know, we have been looking a bit tired, a bit leggy. We definitely saw that in the Burnley game as well. We weren't at our sharpest, our best in that game. So hopefully the new signings will give us new energy and obviously players returning from injury should give us a major boost as well. And it won't only give the fans a boost. I think it'll give the players and the team a bit of a boost as well going into Sunday. Um but looking at the form of both teams going into this game, I think our form um, in general, last five games, was it four four wins and uh, and a loss in our last five games? Man United, two wins, two losses and a draw. I think probably our form on paper is arguably better than how we've been playing, I think. I think our performances maybe have left a lot to be desired. Um, you can see uh, scored in the last five, we've scored we scored 10. Man United only scored six. Um, conceded, we're level six each. But look, their home form, to be fair, they've uh, won three of their last five. In our away form, we've only won two of our last five. So we haven't been doing great away from home. And you cast your mind back to their last home game. Um, it was a very impressive 3-2 victory over Aston Villa when Villa were 2 0 up. So, um, you know, definitely can't take anything for granted when going to Old Trafford, um, albeit the game before that, they lost 3 0 at home to Bournemouth. So they've been very Jekyll and Hyde the whole season, Man United, haven't they? But it's hard to know what kind of Man United are going to turn up. They've just been so inconsistent, haven't they, Brian? They have. And I'll tell you one thing obviously, what, what happened with Villa also happened with Brentford, didn't it, when they were 1 0 down and. Or, uh, happened with Nottingham Forest earlier in the season when I was back. If, if 2 nil advantage at Old Trafford is nothing. Because if they get one goal, that crowd just roars them on and gets so noisy and so boisterous that the, they, they, they just have that energy there. We all know about Fergie time from the past. Um, we can't... We, we Our concentration is vital. We have to stay switched on. We have to make sure if we do take a... If we do go 2 nil up, it's like, right, OK, don't switch off your composure, your your concentration is vital. And I think some of these teams have switched off and allowed that one goal. And then it's just open Pandora's box at Old Trafford. We know mm. throughout that, and this is again, going back to the mentality of going to there. They have a history of these kind of decisions going their way, Fergie time from back in the day and how they get these things going their way at Old Trafford. So I think if we go there with the right concentration, the right mentality, that should see us through. Like you said, for, for them having the buzz of having uh, Radcliffe there, you're going to see two new players mm. with new energy for us. 
potentially certain players back from injury. The bench is starting to take shape. Beforehand as well, our bench has been next to non-existent. It's just been people on there. I think this time last year, we had about three youth uh, products on the bench that had absolutely no chance of getting on the, get, uh, on the, uh, on the pitch. Whereas now, that everything's starting to take shape, isn't it? The bench is looking better. That front line is going to have some new energy. Oh, sorry, the, the starting eleven is going to have some new energy. We've got an incredible Vicario in goal compared to, to what we had last season there. Uh, so everything is looking rosy for us. We've just got to make sure our concentration stays for 90 minutes. Yeah, looking at the bookies odds, it's quite um, interesting. It's very tight. Man United are slight favourites going into this game, twenty-three to twenty uh, for them to win. Spurs are twenty-one to ten. Um, so um, uh, they're sorry that they're quite. They're, they're, they are slight favourites, but it's not like massive in terms of uh, um, the the odds between Spurs and Man United. Um, Spurs closer to like two to one. Maybe it's a case of uh, just our away form against the big sides. We have we know we've picked up some good results away away draws at City and an away draw at um, Arsenal, oh. but we haven't seemed to be picking up too many big wins away from home just yet. Obviously, we haven't been to Anfield uh, just yet. We have we uh, who else is in the top six? We haven't been to Newcastle yet. Uh, away from home um chelsea we got a uh, we haven't played chelsea away yeah. brighton we lost west ham away we haven't played yet villa away we haven't played yet so we haven't had that that big like uh statement away win yet have we this season so maybe that goes into nope. um the thinking of man united being slight favorites going into it um but yeah i think it's going to be a really tough game and as you say i think if we can quieten the crowd hopefully early on and and not let on standards drop like maybe Aston Villa did in that second half where I thought they were atrocious in that second half filler. They kind of allowed Man United back in that game and um once Man United got a foothold in it and the crowd were behind them, it was very hard to turn that turn around that momentum. The one bad thing going into this game you could look at it two ways, but it's probably negative. Is Man United are have do have a lot of returning players going into this game. So Lissandro Martinez, Luke Shaw, Casimiro um, all returning into in, into the frame in, in this game. So very frustrating, the timing uh, for Tottenham, because maybe a week ago, you probably be playing a lot more of a depleted Man United team. But on the flip side, what I would say about that is... I always feel like when like when you chuck in a lot of players who have been injured together, they're, if they're all lacking match fitness, a lot of the times it can, you can struggle. You can think it's a good thing, oh, we've got all these players back, but then you chuck them all in at the same time, and all of a sudden, you, by the 60th minute, you've got a lot of players who are struggling to complete the 90 minutes because they've all been struggling with match fitness. So you can look at it two ways, but uh, yep. what, 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 what kind of boost will it be for Man United to have these players back in the lineup? I think it will be uh, soon, but like you said, I you've literally just t- taken what I was going to say about chucking in so many players coming back from injury could be a concern. And then you think about it, Shaw could be back and Martinez could be back. Well, you're going to get tested with pure pace down that down that line. And if you're coming back from an injury, the last thing you want they, defenders hate pace running in them anyway. So coming back from an injury. Are you going to be able to keep up with these guys? Like Brennan Johnson, for instance, running down at those two will give me nightmares um, if I've just come back from an injury. So the fact that it's two defenders that could be back as well is, uh, for me, is a positive for us and, and a huge negative for them. Yeah, the the, the worry, the worrying thing in terms of the tactical setup of both teams is, I think Man United, the how Man United set up, is probably quite good for them in terms of how to counteract our play they'd like to have Rashford and Garnacho, you know um, in the wide areas where we're probably most vulnerable they do like to play more a transitional game which if they do get right there's definitely space to hit us on the counter and um, I know they haven't been defending so well I do think Spurs will dominate possession and have control of the game at the beginning but if Man United do play to their potential with their aggressive nature, play in the transition, hit us with the likes of Rashford and Garnacho on the counter with the likes of Bruno, you know, sort of supplying them with, with through balls and Hoyland being able to hold up the play with his strength as well. I do see, I do, especially with Romero and Van der Ven and Dragosin either being coming back from injury or being very new to the team. 
Is there a potential of them catching us on a good day for, good day for them? Just because, you know, maybe if it was a week later, Romero had a bit longer in, in, in training and Van der Ven had a few more minutes in his legs and Dragerson had a week with the team. Maybe we would be coming into this game a bit more ready. But because of this, the timing of the game, is, does the timing suit Man United more or Tottenham, do you think? Do you know what? This is where, where when it comes to that, that's a hard question to answer. But what I will say with this is, as you were saying with them on the break and Rashford and uh, Ganacho on the wing, this is where I think destiny has become so vital. We saw against Bournemouth the amount of ground he was covering uh, to get across and cover the centre backs and uh, and assist Poro on that side. I think is going to be a, a pivotal role. I think I actually think Andrews made that part of his game. That when they, if a team like United were playing. Make sure you're tucking in to cover the centre back. Should we be exposed? And I think it's a huge, huge game for Destiny. A huge yeah. game for Destiny. And the way he performed, and he did it brilliantly against Bournemouth, absolutely magnificently. I think that's what we're going to be asking to do again. It's whether he can uh, keep up the brilliant form that he has. Yeah, and I think it's important as well for Destiny to help out Van der Ven when possible because we know he's just returning from his injury. We don't want him to be put under as, uh, as much... Uh, look, obviously he's going to have to cover the ground. He's going to have to put the work in, but if, if Destiny can help him out as much as possible in these early weeks to just ease him into the team rather than you know leaving him um, by himself, which I know at the beginning of the season he, he could do and he could handle it perfectly, perfectly well. I'm just worried about overworking Van der Ven early on and then him him redoing his hamstring straight away. And that's what is concerning me. So he's going to have to help Van der Ven, I think, in these early games before he's like getting that match fitness up and he's fully ready to, you know, handle things by himself. But with those two, with that pace that those two have, uh, I, I do believe we should have enough recovery pace to um, handle um Man United on the breakaway uh, if they're on top of their game and uh, if we if 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 he is if he is Dragerson going to be starting and I, th I do think he's got the aggression and the, and the strength to deal with Hoyland especially if they're going to go direct I think Dragerson will really relish that challenge. Yeah, I, th I think we get, I need to add someone else into this. I think it's a, a big big game and I've got no doubts that it will stand up and deliver. Is uh, Benson call to offer that support to them too and that protection. His timing and anticipation is second to none. So I think it's a, a big, big game for him. And you're right, we are going to have to make sure that Destiny can protect them should they get behind. And obviously you've got that layer of protection with um, with Benton Court in there. And I think this will be one of the first times that Benton Court and Van der Ven, I think, start a game together, won't it? I know Benton Court came on against mm. Crystal Palace and played, but I think it's the first time they will actually start a game together. Which yeah. will be uh, good to see. So that I mean, you when you think about uh, Van der Ven, uh, Benton Court, and Dragerson, or and Romero, the three of them now getting reg that, that's a, a nice little triangle to have, isn't it? Hundred percent, and that's that. I, I, I can't wait to see how those uh, three complement each other. I'm sure they will. Um, talking about a potential debut in Inverna, um, we're expecting him to see him on the left. Um, Obviously, we're thinking he's going to be up against Diego Dallo, but it could be Juan Bissaka as well. It's going to be interesting. To, I don't think Werner is one of those players who likes to get to the byline and like do cutbacks and things like that and go on the outside, especially when he's on the left. I definitely see him as a player who likes to cut inside, get shots off, link with the play that way. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how he adapts to how we play because I, I feel like... Ange is going to ask him to stay a bit wider than he's used to and it's might, it might take a bit of adapting but as well if he does get the opportunity to run in behind and, 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 and use that pace we saw didn't we against um, Burnley how often we were going for that long ball over the top to Johnson on that left hand side it happened, and, and he was running in behind yeah. it happened time and time again with the likes of Porro and I think it was Ben Tenkel feeding him and if Werner's taking that role I think Werner could could make use of those um, chances a lot more than Johnson did when, when he was getting in behind. Well, I, I completely agree. But the other thing I think that Werner offers to Johnson in different ways is I think if we're attacking down the right, I think you'll see Werner in a much more dangerous position for the, for the defence than you would see Johnson if Werner was going down there. So I can see if a cross comes in for Johnson, like we've done with Richardson for a couple of goals and... Uh, Richarlison isn't able to get on the end of it. 
I've got more confidence that Timo Werner will be there ready to gobble it up as opposed to the other way round. If it was Werner crossing it in and Richarlison missed it, because I think Brennan Johnson is preferring to stay wide at the moment. So I think mm -hmm. Werner offers more of obviously a, a, a finishing um, threat to United than Johnson. I think Werner could be uh, heavily, heavily involved on Sunday. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think it's important as well to kind of get on Bruno's bad side, you know, wind him up a bit, get him to turn all petulant like he does and frustrate him. And if we do that, that's when I feel like Bruno starts to, um, you know, get frustrated and he gets yeah, he gets a bitch and moan. He starts to get yellow yellow cards and foul, gives away fouls as well, which is why it's a bit of a shame Lacelso is out because I feel like he would be pretty good at that. He likes a bit of a shit uh Lacelso, um, so I reckon he would have um, got on the wrong side of Bruno. But hopefully, someone can step into that role and try and wind him up a bit because he's always likely to, um, you know, implode a bit, uh, Bruno, when uh, when you get on his wrong side. Um, but look. That is the preview. What is your prediction then on Sunday? How do you think the game will go? Are you confident of a victory? Well, if you're asking me if I'm confident, do you want me to give you my score prediction? Yeah, go on. All right. So uh, you tell me if I, you think I'm confident or not. I'm going 4 1 Tottenham. 4 1? You think it will be a battering? I think it will be a battering. I really do. I really, really what, do. What, what, makes you, what makes you so confident we're going to go I, there I and then win? I've just got a feeling that the. Uh, United fans are all going to be pumped up and cheery that Ratcliffe's there and the Glazers are on their way out and it's going to be a carnival atmosphere. Andrew will just say to them, go out and spoil it for them. And they will. And they will. I, I'm so convinced this is going to be... like I think it's going to be a very, very... You can have a 4-1 where it's back and forth and whatever and they might... I think this is going to be such a convincing victory. I really do. Uh, listen, you've got me on the positive... This January... The club's got me on the positivity train and I go from one extreme to the other. And now I'm on the, I, I, I literally think this is a, the mentality will be right. The players will be right. I think Werner's going to be heavily involved. I think Johnson's going to have a 4-1 Tottenham. 4-1. For me, I'm not, I'm not going to be pessimistic, but I just, for me, if it was a week later, literally a week later, I think Tottenham would win this game. But I just think the timing is just off for us. I think if Romero had more time and Van der Ven had more time and Dragerson had more time in the back um, going into this game, I think we would be would 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 have a much better job of keeping United quiet. I just feel like they're catching us at the right time, just with defenders only just coming back, not having too much match fitness. Dragerson has only had one training session with the team. So whoever starts a centre-back, I can see having a bit of a struggle at times, I reckon, on Sunday. I feel like Man United are going to be pumped with uh, you know the new ownership and all that kind of stuff and players come back from injury. And that home advantage as well could be crucial. So I'm, I'm going to go 2-2. Two -two. I don't think we'll lose, but I'm going to go 2-2. Two -two. I think we are going to struggle to contain them. But I do think that fresh energy we're going to have will um, allow us to be sharp and will get us in good positions. And I think Werner will be able to stretch Man United as well, which will help us find space. I just feel like they're catching us at a good time. They'll hit us in transition. And our def I can see our defenders struggling with Man United's pace. I can at times. And so I am going to go 2-2 two -two in this game. But let me know in the comment section below how do you see this game going? What your school predictions are? Um, are, you, are we right in how we're analysing how the game is going to go? Or I want to know what your thoughts are.